springtime catfishing. You never know what you're gonna get when it comes to the weather. Sometimes you're out in shorts and a hoodie, and other times you're bundled up for cold weather. How do spring cold fronts affect catfishing? Well, stay tuned, we're gonna talk about it. Hey folks, I'm Dieter Melhorn. Come along with me on this spring catfishing trip where we head out early one morning after a cold front has passed through that left us with temperatures in the low 30s. Guys, I think we got us a taker right there. Oh yeah, hooked up baby, hooked up. This is the uh, bait I had actually up on shallower water, I should say. I ain't gonna say it's totally on the bank, but it was shallower. He did a smackaroni on it. Take that. We'll take that. Chilly morning. One thing about cold weather, it's cold for us. We're out here in 32 degree weather. Fish are sitting in 62 degree water. It ain't changed that much for them. Catfish Pro Rod and Reel Andy Line. Nice male. Nice blue. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Male. Starting to get some coloration. Not a lot, but they're starting to darken up a little bit. Isn't that right, big boy? What you gonna weigh? Oh yeah. Good fish. Good fish right there. That's blue cat. Male. A lot of people look at that and they go, that's a channel cat. Nah, it's a blue cat. Just a male starting to get some coloration to him. Nice fish. It's a good start on the day. Let's get you back alive. Ooh. Well, that was a nice way to start the morning. Uh, didn't take too long uh, after I got set up here. Probably about 10 or 15 minutes. That's kind of nice. Uh, here recently, the bite in the morning uh we've noticed on these guide trips it's taken about 30 or 45 minutes uh before we got bit and a part of that is i've been getting out really really early uh the reason for that is it seems like our bite has been dying by about 11 11 30 so i've been out here right at daylight but it's kind of weird it kind of starts early uh and it takes a little bit to get cranked up for the sun to get up just a little bit and then you know you're getting hit um but this one came nice and early, wasn't set up here long. I had planned to sit here about 90 minutes. Uh, that's what I've been doing on the guide trips. I've told the uh, folks that, hey, we're gonna park it here for 90 minutes just to see what gets going. And uh, every day it's worked, it's paid off. So the uh, initial long early wait uh, has, has worked. We caught fish and we got onto them pretty good. So this one we got early. Uh, and this one was up toward the bank more than where this uh, deeper part of the uh, river channel is here. So. Uh, doing a little prospecting, feeling a little bit of stuff out right now, just trying to see where these fish are, where the biting fish are, and uh, we'll make adjustments from there. Uh, gonna try this for a while, and uh, if the bite's great, I'll sit here and catch them. Uh, if it starts to wane a little bit, I may do some drifting. There's a lot of fish scattered throughout this area. Our catch rates at least recently have been about uh, two fish an hour. So uh, if I can do that, I'll be happy and I'll sit here. But for now, we're just gonna sit back with these bait soak, see if we can stick another one. Got one that has taken off, guys. Uh, he should be in about every line I got over here. <laughs> the uh, ticket is shallow on the bank. This is the second fish I've hooked into. I had that one take a bait and wasn't able to get it in the boat, but I moved another line after that happened. Bang. Yeah, he 
got into some other lines. Get him all loose here. Nice blue, not a monster, but it's a sign of something interesting. I'll tell you about here in a second. Simma, 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 simma. Simma. There we go. Good fish. What's he gonna weigh? What's he gonna weigh? Oh, yeah. Simma, simma. Boom. Got him. Nice blue cat. No giant, but we'll take him. All right, guys. Well, that's two up in the boat. Uh, I had that other bite uh, that did not hook up. That fish hit it, took off to some deep water, and uh, didn't get a hook up on that one. But uh, three bites, every one of them up toward the bank away from this deeper hole. So uh, kind of some some uh, interesting stuff there to ponder. Definitely fish are up there feeding more than they are in these deeper, this deeper hole. Apparently maybe this is just a staging area. This this deeper area is just where they're holding up at and inactive. Uh, a lot of the fish in that area are up off the bottom suspended. Not something I like to see, but there's some on the bottom too. So I don't know, I feel like we ought to catch one. Uh, bite has definitely picked up, uh, even though it's not crazy and on fire, since the sun has got up and hitting the water but uh that's kind of where we stand for now one of the things with these cold fronts that come through in the spring is uh how they affect that you know the water temperature the the overall temperature of the water isn't going to drop significantly but when you get into areas uh like along the bank uh, a shaded area along the bank uh, a south uh a south side bank one that's not you know a north facing or a north, you know, on the north side of the body of water that gets light all day, uh, they can cool down more and that can affect what's going on with the uh, crappie and uh, bluegill, brim, sunfish, bass that are moving up to their feed. A lot of these catfish follow those fish up to the bank to feed on them. And uh, sometimes uh, if the temperature change is significant, especially if it's prolonged for several days, it can pull those fish back to deeper water. Um, we're not, or I'm not casting right onto the bank here. Uh, I'm a little ways off of it. Closer to the bank, uh, this is something you would be casting into if you were bank fishing. So, uh, matter of fact, you'd be throwing way further than where these baits are uh, bank fishing. I'm probably within, uh, I don't know, 50 feet of the bank. So uh, it's relatively close, but not super shallow. So. Those fish are definitely cruising through there to eat, looking for food. Uh, maybe some of the bluegill have pulled back off. Maybe the crappie have, who knows, but that's kind of the strategy. One of the things that uh, you need to keep in mind is these cold fronts roll through in the springtime. Let's see if this fish is on there. Boy, it's a lot of slack line. That one is coming up the boat. Oh, there he is, there he is. He is coming up the boat. Making a move to the boat. That's another line that I relocated up near the bank. It's definitely where the bite's at. Definitely where the bite's at. This one is a chicken bait. Let's see if I can lift him in. Boom, boom. Give me a sucker. Good chicken fish. Got him on some chicken. There he is. Good looking fish. Good looking fish. Y'all know what that means, don't you? Squeeze the chicken. All right, guys, that's number three in the boat. That is the first one that we've had on chicken today. Chicken's, uh, been dominating the guide trips. I ran about six or seven guide trips in a row and it outperformed the cut bait on every one of those trips until yesterday. Uh, interestingly, yesterday's trip, uh, I think we had nine fish and five of them came on cut bait. So uh, the one interesting thing was the biggest fish of the day, 30 pounds, was on a piece of chicken. So uh, I don't know what impact 
a cold front has on whether they bite chicken or not. <laughs> Probably none. Uh, but I do know this. Uh, this time of the year, once water temperatures are up into the 60s, these cold fronts have less of an impact than they do uh, when those water temperatures are lower. Uh, once water temperature into the 60s is a very comfortable range for fish to to thrive in. So uh, it's not the end of the world. It really generally is going to affect your shallow water fishing, your shallow clear water, uh, shallow muddy water, I should say, more than it is the uh, uh, some of the clear water, especially you know the, the water on those north banks that really get sunlight all day. Um, so far here, um, these fish look like they're using this deeper water as like a staging holding area, and then they're moving up shallow here to feed. That's what's working right now. This is just an early morning thing, it's hard to say, but the, the temperatures really aren't having an effect here. And that's the cool thing about later in the spring is that it's not the end of the world. There's probably more discomfort for the angler than there is for the fish. I'm trying to see if this has got a fish on it. A lot of slack line, a lot of slack line. Boom, there he is. Coming at the boat. Coming at the boat. Got hooked up on that one, luckily. Oh, another eater. Another eater. And guess what, guys? Ooh, 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 simma, simma, simma. Another one on cut bait. That's right. Another one on cut bait. I see your size blue. There just ain't no big, big fish going up there to eat. Get plenty of these smaller fish, but the big ones are not cruising up through there. At least not yet. Maybe they will. We got that one early. That was it. I'm gonna chunk that bait back up there. Uh, got my timer going. Just getting ready to move. Sat there and was eating a sandwich. I said, I'm gonna make a move here in a minute, but I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'll put that bait back up there one more time. See if there's maybe one more fish up in there. This looks like there's some fish moving through. Well guys, four fish in the boat. One good one. Three of them on cut bait. The bite's starting to slow a little bit. Not as much activity. I, th I think this is what's been happening the past few days. It's been kind of that good little flurry from after sunrise to when the uh, Sun tops the trees, catch a few fish, and uh, it starts to slow, at least on the anchor bite. So what I'm gonna do is what I've done on some of the guy trips. I'm gonna go do some trolling. Uh, we've got virtually no wind right now, so it's a good opportunity to kind of troll and drag where I want to. So I'm gonna get these baits pulled up here, make a little move, uh, and drift some of this same area. See if I can find some fish, bringing the baits to them. I think I got one on the planer. Yep, that's a fish. That is a fish. Weird bite. There we go. Let's see what we can do here to get this planer off. Dancing with the devil here. Taking the planers off by yourself like this. Better off to pop it. But little advanced angling prowess you can get one loose a little less trouble when you get to the bow you don't have it flailing around getting wrapped up and everything so let's go outside of that one now back working into this side of the boat Liftable, a better bag of gripping.
Really good, it. Shot him in the boat. Got a little mud on him. There he is. Several fish this size today, guys. Several of them. You know what else, guys? Squeeze the chicken. Well, I covered a pretty good bit of water to get to that one fish. That was a uh, pretty long pull through a lot of arches. And uh, are they catfish or are they something else? I don't know. I even caught a small one on my bait rod there uh, just a second ago. Uh, but this has kind of been the uh, way it's been going uh, about you know, late morning, right before noon, the bite has died off. It's not something we usually get on this lake. Um, but it is what it is. It's just slowing, man. It's like I tell people, uh, fish don't bite forever, even during a good bite. And I tell people that on my guide trips all the time. Uh, you know, when the fishing's great and you're catching them, it's 100 miles an hour. I was like, enjoy it, guys. It's going to come to an end. And, and that's the way it, it's the way it goes. Uh, but uh, I'm going to keep on dragging through here. It's warmed up nicely. Hopefully, this is the last 30 degree day for spring. I hope that's the case. We've got uh, rain coming in tomorrow and uh, some storms, and we're going to get back to more seasonal temperatures. So hopefully the, the cold is behind us and we're into normal spring fishing from here on out. Well, folks, if you made it this far, thank you for watching. Here are a couple more videos that I think you're going to like. I'd watch that one and then that one. No, no do, do that one first and then that one. I, I don't know. Just watch them both. They're both good.